This all relates to homesteading, so if you want to know what happened to the homestead, here we are. Well friends, I am back today answering a lot of questions I usually answer in comments, uh, but I'll still get DMs and comments on other videos and such, so I'm just gonna jump into what happened to the homestead. Travis is right outside the window here making kites for the kids, so good dad points, but you might hear him making kites. So in some uh, shape or fashion, the question comes through, what happened to the homestead? Couple uh, uh, little things I can go through is, I try to show as much as I can share and as much as I wanna share, and as much as I have energy to share, uh, doing videos takes a lot of time and takes a lot of energy. And a lot of what I put my time into video-wise is directly in the kitchen or shopping <laughs> or doing like Q&A type videos. So I did start doing some homesteading videos and I have not been consistently, oh that's cute, have not been consistently doing homestead videos and I'm gonna try to, to dig through why. So if you're new here, I grew up on a horse farm, horses, chickens, goats, but we were not homesteaders. Well, my mom is a, a horse raiser and trainer and a horse extraordinaire and I was her kid, so I was around it. I have been in the barn when babies are, baby horses are born and she, we put the placenta in the bucket and all of that. Uh, so I'm a farm girl of sorts, but we did not, like when I think of homesteading, um, homesteading is where you're doing a lot of activities to provide food and uh, various provisions for your family. So through the decade that we were at our farmhouse, I did have some homesteading visions there, especially once I laid down working as a nurse full time. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm home full time. I can be a normal mom now. You know, I'm not working 40 hours on the weekends and homeschooling during the week, um, which the Lord certainly gave us the grace for for a season. But I thought now that I'm home, you know, maybe we can do some homesteading things. Maybe I can garden and uh, we can get some chickens. And we did that. And by the Lord's grace and mercy in that fertile farm soil, we could just plant plants that I got from the store or seeds from the package and uh, stuff just grew. And so I have all kinds of cute pictures of kids at various ages and stages. You know, us just filling the wagon. I got one with Liam sitting on the big pumpkins and we're hauling them from the field and the kids planting gardens and it just, it went really well there. And even though we worked in it, like we checked in it often, I would go up there in the evenings or sometimes during the day, we'd go pick through the garden. It was pretty low impact on me. I put stuff in the ground and we got a lot of stuff out. And I did some canning then. I know I did some jams and some peaches and such, uh, but most of it we would just end up using. And I wasn't too much into food preservation at that time, although it was on my future goal list. And then I got, I've shared with you before, a wonderful deal on chickens. Uh, this lady was moving and I got like 30 some birds and the house they built and the fencing for like $75. So we got going with chickens, had those for quite a while. Later we purchased another chicken coop and did more chickens there. Just chickens, chicken, chicken. I've, I've been able to do chickens, yay. We never got as far as doing goats and such there. And then I've even done videos on why we didn't homestead at the forest house. Uh, wild animals and just a lot going on during those four years that we lived there. So you can, I will have videos linked below if you'd like to go through and watch those. Which brings us now to this house which this weekend that I'm filming this is our two year anniversary for moving in here. So uh, again, the Lord is gracious to us because we closed on this house and a few weeks later, the whole world fell apart. So sitting here in 2020, I was like, oh, the whole world's falling apart. And we've got this property that looks primed and ready to do some of these old homesteading thoughts. How about we we do this? We, we brought our flock of chickens with us. We brought our two great Pyrenees with us. Uh, but let's do some more homesteading things. And 
our family, just like your family and many other families around the world, uh, we could just see like we're gonna have a long time. <laughs> we're gonna have months is what it felt like. We will have months here to just do nothing but do these homestead projects and get this thing a rolling. And that's what we did. And so to recap, in 2020, uh, we did a ton of fencing and gates. We did three buildings. Uh, we also, Zion did this dome. Uh, for the, sorry, the spring flies are out already. So while I sit here, they're like flying in front of the camera. Built what I call a meat bird dome. Travis would go and purchase different things for me that I would find on Craigslist, like a bunny hutch or this little small chicken tractor, but it was a good deal. And I thought, well, we could put um, some pullets, or I was thinking at the time, maybe even rabbits. I've since learned not to do rabbits in it. Uh, but anyway, we got some different equipment. Also, uh, preparing the homestead wise for whatever may come. We had one of those simple pumps installed. The outside water sources only work if you have electric. So a simple pump is great for an emergency because you just pump it like an old fashioned pump and it pulls the water up. So you can still get water to like flush your toilets, water your animals. It's there to give you water if there is no electric. And that's just on the list of things that we could do for this new to us property at that time. That seemed like a wise thing to do. And so we did it. Uh, another thing that we had done during that time, this house has three chimneys. Now I also get a lot of fireplace questions, especially since I'm doing this kitchen remodel and talking about future house remodeling plans. But three fireplaces and one of them is in the basement. And buying this house as is, all three chimneys are done. They're in this huge concrete structure together so they can be individually repaired to repair one chimney and to do the liner that needed to be installed was thousands of dollars plus we also did a wood stove insert we thought wisdom was first off i know how messy wood stoves are because we had one for 10 years although they can heat the whole house it's just one more thing and it is super messy okay so ma mama didn't i didn't want a wood stove up here in our main living area to drag wood through and to just deal with stuff wisdom was to do that wood stove in the basement and that way heat rises and heats the whole house and so that's another thing in 2020 that we had done only the chimney that goes to that basement wood stove was repaired and a brand new wood stove that is rated to heat the whole house top and bottom was installed. Also during 2020, we raised and butchered about 100 birds. We did 12 turkeys and the rest were meat birds. We did those in a couple batches. We raised them, we butchered them. I have a not the the gory details of the butchering process but i have like a step-by-step -step kind of tour on how what our setup was over in my large family table membership community i believe i did share a couple pictures of our tables and our setup over on instagram as well also in 2020 because we were going to the grocery store and we were limited to one gallon of milk at a time and sometimes there wouldn't even be milk i was thinking through okay we need a dairy goat because <laughs> i didn't want to jump right to a cow but we got a dairy goat we milked her for nine months we got over 270 gallons because we got a gallon a day from her and that more than paid for the cost of buying her i also did a big uh jump out and try to get a garden here i was hoping my hopes and dreams were it would be like all my other big jump out gardens where i could just get stuff in the ground and pay a little attention to it and a bunch of stuff grows uh, we did potatoes. We basically yielded the same amount that we planted uh, and we just used those. I didn't even worry with canning them or anything. We just, we just used those potatoes. The garden was pretty much a flop. Uh, the trees that were around it, the stuff that I thought that won't bother us did end up bothering us. And so the garden was not fantastic. Now we still got peppers and tomatoes and cucumbers and such. We just, whatever we got, we used. I was not 
piling up a big bushel that I was then gonna can. It was vegetables for the summer and we used them and that's our 2020 garden. Now also in 2020, I became pregnant with Mr. Tobin Josiah and he's our ninth pregnancy, our seventh boy. As soon as I'm pregnant, whether I, when I was 21 or when I was 41, my mind knows I'm pregnant. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just tired. And it's okay to be tired when you're pregnant because you're growing a whole human. By the summer of 2020, mama was tired. So some of the things I thought we would also be able to do, okay, a kid has that. It was a, a kite. I saw strings blowing. Um, like I wanted to raise meat rabbits and butcher them at home for a meat source. And what are some of the other things? I wanted to have a beehive. Um, just a couple common like homesteader things. You know, I was already talking to a friend. We were talking about going in together and, you know, building the pig structure and, and, and raising a pig. And, you know, she'd have one and I'd have one. And um, we were looking at butchering options. I mean, that, that was talk, things we were talking about. But as soon as I became pregnant and my energy was sapped, it's like, okay. And then priority mode is, okay, uh, homeschooling a whole lot of children, growing another human, running a more than full-time business. I'm not going to butcher rabbits right now, and I'm not going to um, heavily focus on many other projects. We did so much in the first half of 2020, more than um, some people would do in a year or so. We had that focus time, we got it done. And so then I just decided, okay, maintenance mode. So cared for the chickens, cared for the dogs, <laughs> you know, cared for everything. But once we did that last load of chickens, it was like, okay, we don't have to do any other big projects right now because we did a lot of big projects and now I'm growing a human. This is my priority right now. And so I figured fall 2020, my thoughts were, it's okay to not do any other projects for this year, Jamerell, you've done a lot. You can just kind of coast through fall and winter. And my thinking was, well, I'm, I have the baby in March and that'll be perfect because we'll just roll right into a garden and uh, had some different ideas on where I wanted to put the garden, just kind of pick up where we left off but kind of take the fall and winter nice and easy. Certainly sounds like a fantastic idea. Then in January, 2021, I had been having this back pain and I just, I felt like I was feeling um, worse than usual. Again, not that I feel bad in pregnancies, but I'm tired because my body's doing a lot. So I felt like there was like an extra layer and again, don't know what else to do other than take it slow. And that's what mama was doing. Yay, nice slow winter. Uh, but in January, 2021, and you can watch through my kidney experience playlist, uh, I had a day where I started with some mild back pain and it continued all the way into until I had nothing left to vomit and I was in the ER and I was so, cons uh, my concern was I was in early labor or I was going septic. And I was very sick and there was a lot of morphine and a video to prove it. And then, and I do these videos, I enjoy doing videos. I enjoy chatting with y'all about stuff. I feel like you're my friends just sitting here listening and we're just chatting and I know so many of you say, you put all my videos when you're doing dishes or when you're having your morning coffee and we're just chatting. And so I'm thankful for this medium of being able to do videos. And so I even did videos when I was in the hospital because I was like, well, I can't just sit here. I want to make a video. So I follow that as that is something the Lord has put on my heart and that is what I am doing. So uh, in the hospital though, so lots of morphine, lots of IV antibiotics. They could not do a CT scan because I was pregnant. I was just going into my third trimester then. And um, they, I think they did an ultrasound. They did something trying to see this kidney. They could not see anything. They just couldn't tell what was happening, but obviously I was sick. And they said my E. coli levels were just off the chart. And so at that point, they thought I had a UTI that had backed up into my right kidney, and that was the problem. And so as soon as I was out of the hospital, uh, they started me on a whole, well, I actually started on those PO antibiotics before I left as well. 
And so they hit me with several weeks of very, very strong antibiotics. And then after that, I went in to test. And guess what? When I tested, E. coli is still off the charts. And then um, the plan was to put me on a lower dose to taper off. And so what I'm saying about the homestead is <laughs> from January to March, when I thought I was going to be cozy on the couch and, you know, reading some gardening and canning books and making my plans for after the baby, uh, January through March was staying on antibiotics, drinking a gallon of water a day, going for lots of tests, going for extra ultrasounds, just going, 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 trying to get the E. coli mess straight and figure out what it was and it wasn't going away. And then in March, I had my baby. It was a traumatic birth, okay. I don't wanna share the details about it because I have it straight in my head and my heart. Um, and I have talked to the people I've needed to talk to about it, but I think once I vocalize it and then it's on the internet and then I have to filter um, not, not the 98.7% wonderful people and people tell me not to listen to the negative people and that is super fine to say, but when you have negative stuff that still finds its way to come in, once I read it, this is just me, once I read it, I have to, I mentally process it. Even if I know it's trash and it's junk, it still takes a toll. And so that is why I am not sharing my birth story with Tobin because I think it's gonna take, like right, right now I feel like I wanna cry. You know, I think it's just gonna take me back to a place where I'm processing and dealing with decisions I made and decisions they made and the way things were handled and um, I, I can't do that. I can't put the energy into that. So anyway, that was March. And then even after I had Tobin, I had some issues with a possible lip tie and tongue tie. We had to deal with that. And then I was still not feeling well and still very sick and still carrying this E. coli infection, which we were still doing more antibiotics for. I did have basically three different practices that were handling that between uh, the practice that I saw in the hospital and my midwifery group and oh, what was the other one? Oh, another uh, like family physician that I was referred to. Anyway, I just kept playing along, doing what I felt I needed to do. Uh, but in May, so about six weeks postpartum, when we went to the beach for those two weeks, uh, just the, the back pain was getting very intense again. It's raining here and Travis was bringing kids and sh making sure the doors are shut and all that. Okay, so six weeks postpartum. Um, and I was very hopeful that somehow after I had the baby, I would be better. At that point, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know if, you know, him putting the pressure on my bladder was what had caused this asymptomatic UTI that had backed up into my right kidney. So I was just drinking my water, taking my antibiotics. This all relates to homesteading. So if you want to know what happened to the homestead, here we are, okay? And so... As of May, I then called to make the appointment with a urologist. So this was the fourth professional I was going to. Got in there, I think it was June was my appointment, and then we got the CT scan, and then if you've been around here, you know, say it with me, we found out it was a huge kidney stone, but it was a kidney stone that was harboring and growing the bacteria itself, and we could not find that out while I was pregnant. It could have been a fluke, kidney stone from pregnancy, or it could have been a fluke kidney stone that I've had for years that just made it act up at this time. We don't know. Uh, and because of the, the type and the size of the stone, uh, through another long drawn out process of appointments and waiting and antibiotics while we wait, it all came down to I was gonna have the kidney surgery for the antibiotics in August, they thought it would be two procedures where they put the stent in at the first surgery being totally knocked out and under, which was nerve wracking because I'd never had that happen before. And then the second one, they'd be able to go in, go up in the right kidney, bust it up, pull it out, hopefully get it all, and then be able to take the stent out a few weeks later in the office. We didn't know how it was gonna go, and it turns out my uh, doctor says he likes to under-promise and over-deliver. He did it all at the first, the first time I went under the first surgery, and 
got it all, got me all squared away. Still took several weeks though with the stint and dealing with stuff. So by September 2021, I felt like a human again. And basically you can say from September 2020 to September 2021, a whole year uh, was taken up between pregnancy and then getting unexpectedly sick and then a baby and all that comes with a baby and uh and you know even newborn days nur nursing every two hours and and snuggling the baby those are more important to me than growing a garden snuggling that baby and nursing that baby and getting him all his snuggles and all his loving that's more important to me than homesteading now for the people who come at me a lot with why aren't you homesteading? Where's your homestead? Why aren't you doing this? You said you were gonna do that. A lot of, if you're watching homesteading channels, a lot of these homesteading channels are two adults homesteading full-time. Like the Justin Rhodes Show and Art and Brie. And uh, of course we know she is focusing on her twins right now, yes and amen, and that's wonderful. And Jess with Roots and Refuge. Obviously, I'm not them and they're not me. But when I talk about homesteading, a lot of folks who watch homesteading channels, that's what they think and that's what they focus on. Those wonderful creators live homesteading full-time the husband and the wife, and they're working together and they are doing all the full-time things with full-time homesteading. Friends of mine who have an heirloom seed company, they probably work 70 hours or week or more between their business and all their full-time homesteading. And that's two adults and then a lot of kids in the family too and everybody working hard together. So we don't have that set up. Travis, my wonderful husband, he can give me all the outlets I want on the island and he can give me a dedicated 20 amp circuit, if I'm saying this all correctly, for my home freeze dryer, if that's the way I wanna go. Uh, he can fix our car, so we haven't had to have a car payment in a million years because most things he can fix or get figured out. And then even if there's something that we decide to take it into the shop for, it's more of a time savings thing, but he knows exactly what the mechanic needs to do. Many times Travis orders the part <laughs> with some of these things and he'll be like, okay, I just, they need to put the hours into this, but here's the part, this is what you need to do. So he has many gifts and many things that he does, super husband, super dad, super all around guy, but he's not gonna butcher rabbits with me. He's not gonna hoe no potatoes, <laughs> you know. He's not a hobby homesteader. Now, he loves me, he thinks I'm great, yay, and so he'll support any hobbies I wanna take on, any adventures, you know, he thinks I'm cute, he'll listen to me talk, uh, but it's not his thing. So what that means is, if I'm down with my health and having a baby uh, and doing all the wonderful nurturing mom things that I get to do and reading stories to my kids and, and cooking up a lot of freezer meals and, and using my big 30 quart bowl, if I'm doing all those things, there's no one else, again, to butcher the chickens or butcher the rabbits. Now, when I butchered the chickens, I brought all the kids along with me who wanted to take part. Those who wanted to help butcher did. Well, I had another very experienced friend come out and she just walked us through it and got us going and that was fantastic. And so we have learned a lot and I do have kids that are super interested, but mama here has to cheerlead and lead it. And mama, at least for 2021, was doing kidney stuff and brand and growing a human stuff and brand new baby stuff. That was my 2021. So for those of you asking what I grew in 2021 and where's the big garden and why didn't I do this and I said I was doing that, that's what I did instead. And I'm real glad that I was able to get my kidney squared away and I am so thankful for Tobin and he is much more valuable to me than raising rabbits and harvesting tomatoes. That was my 2021. But now, now, now we're in 2022 and all things are possible, right? Okay, so I get excited. That could be a song, Jim Rowe gets excited. Well, trying to calm myself down, because he told me it's almost a year now, right? And I will have this disclaimer. Um, if I'm pregnant next week, you know, everything yet again is gonna go to that real slow and steady, Jim Earl's taking a nap every afternoon. We're growing a baby, that's the priority. And many of these 
light plans probably will not happen, okay? And this is why at the farmhouse for 10 years, I did get some gardens done, I did get some chickens done, I got to dabble in the canning, but having my children, raising my children, homeschooling my children, reading to my children, being able to go on walks and swallow my spit and enjoy the sunshine with my children, those are my life priorities right there. So the homesteading and all these other projects are lower on my list. My family absolutely comes first. I would love to do all these other things. And I would love to do these things that I'm going to tell you now that I'm already starting to dabble in and get excited about. So just saying as the, the real human that I am and the real life mama that I am, uh, these plans can and will change. Okay, so for 2022, we're obviously starting the year off with a massive project. We are turning 640 square feet of attached too small for Travis's real workshop garage into my mega mama kitchen. And we're gonna have a big stove and a big refrigerator and two sinks and two dishwashers. I mean, we're just, we're doing all the wonderful, super exciting kitchen things. How long is this gonna take? I have no idea. So it is February and we have our first inspections tomorrow. You can see the floor joists are here. You can see the plumbing is up. I either just had a garage progress update video or one is coming out after this. So things are moving forward, but now we're gonna have inspections and then we're gonna have, I don't know if it's gonna be one week, two week, three weeks of Travis working through the electrical aspects. And then we're gonna go into phase two with our builder. I don't know how long this takes, okay? <laughs> I do know as I have shared most of our things that we've been ordering have been coming in. So I'm just thinking realistically, let's just say end of April, like it is totally done and we have furniture in here. Is that really gonna be end of May? I don't know, but end of April, okay. <laughs> and if it's sooner, that's great. If it takes longer, that's okay, because like I said, I have no idea. I've never renovated anything or uh, had anything like this done or built before. Um, what we did get done in 2021 is we had, I think it's a 340 foot long privacy fence put up for Travis's wonderful man land behind that. And we had a whole new HVAC system put in the whole house. And for those of you who have wondered how we're gonna heat the new kitchen, my HVAC company said our new system is big enough, they're just gonna run some lines in here and do the registers in the ceiling. And that's how that's happening. And then also in 2021, hmm, what else? We had our playhouse redone. So these are like property things that I didn't stand there and do, but a bunch of trees, dead trees and stuff down. And then also end of 2020, the whole family got outside and built our whole big steel pool. Sometimes I feel like, man, Jamarelle, you're, you know, you're doing nothing, you're getting nothing done. And people ask like, why aren't you doing stuff? And I'm like, I feel like we're doing stuff. So all that to say, 2022. So I'm gonna share with you the 2022 homesteading thoughts. And when I talk about homesteading, I would like to raise our own meat and provide our own vegetables and I would like to can and to freeze dry and uh, to have a variety of food um, and provision here from our property. Now, that being said, you know, maybe it'll take a decade for us to get there because we have other things in life that happen like babies that we pause for. And we had two moves within, was it five years? Um, or I guess within four years we moved, we lived there four years, we moved, whatever. So, you know, and we had, we had two moves. Other disclaimer, life pauses can happen. So this year, maybe, maybe this will be Jamerell's year of gentle homesteading, where I actually get to do a few things, but we do it gentle, you think? I don't know, let's see. One of the things, this is in no particular order, 
the garden needs to get moved. Where I have it right now, from living on this property for two years now, I know a better location on the property that gets a lot of sun, a lot of the trees are far away, it grows beautiful grass, and whenever we raised our meat birds, we moved their chicken dome around over there, and there's plenty of room to have room to move the dome to fresh grass every day, and plenty of room to have a nice big garden over there and I would like to have raised beds. Travis has already started one section of the garden. I forget why. I think he had a stump ground that was in there. Anyway, the fencing is already cut. We're gonna roll up the fencing and take out the gate and take out the, the stakes and everything. And we're gonna basically reuse all that on another part of the property. But that's not a priority right now. This thing that I'm sitting in is our priority for however many more months it takes to get this done. But we will be moving the garden and I just thought in my head, okay, well, a reasonable goal would be that at some point next fall, so I'm not breaking my neck and pushing. You know I can push. <laughs> okay, I'm not pushing to get the garden moved uh, now, basically, in order to have a big garden this year. I have an answer for that that I'll get to in a minute, but my goal is it would be nice to have it done to move it in 2022, depending on our renovation projects, because after this kitchen, and we're still rolling through what our next projects will be, but we're gonna have our focus on some other projects as well. I've already talked to a landscaper friend of mine, actually the same gentleman who did our fence and did our playhouse repair, about um, him coming in and doing those raised beds for me and getting it ready for next year. And that may be what we do. Again, we'll see because the project list is deep and wide. But before I do another garden here, whether we do it or I have someone from outside come in and help, that needs to be done. Another thing I want to continue to do more of, I've been working on canning a bunch of beef broth here recently. I wanna just continue with the canning. What I'm thinking in my head is that most days before I get our school day going in the morning, I can work on the routine, which is what I've been doing for a few days, we'll see how it goes, of getting you know something on the stove that will be canned or getting the canner running so that while we're having our school day and then going off into the rest of our day, the canner's there doing what it needs to do, and I'm still in the room with it. Um, so that's my thought about canning. And of course, I'm canning right now on a stove with one burner, and we haven't got yet to for Travis to replace the front burner. He'll probably watch this video and say, okay, yeah, yeah, we, we did need to. My new stove, We'll have nine burners, so we should be able to get a whole lot of cannon going and done on that stove. But right now, and working with what I have, we're doing broth, we're moving forward with broth. Uh, and I've got a lot of beef bones, and I'm thinking about just doing them all and getting all the, the bone broth going, and uh, why not? Because then we'll have it, and I am use broth every day, so yay, let's do that. And then my other thought with the canning is, um, and this is, from a good friend of mine, Ashley Bufa, and her channel is Ashley M. Bufa. Uh, you can go over, Ashley's got wonderful for her kitchen remodel and um, laundry hacks and, and all kinds of great things over there. Uh, but Ashley's idea was, and I'm like, that's fantastic, Ashley, that will save my life. Um, going to the produce auction, she has a very large produce auction near where she lives, and I looked it up and in my area, we've got one of the largest produce auctions in the state, and I'm like, oh. I can go to that. And so I'm just gonna go to the produce auction this summer. Friends of ours that are in our homeschool group have a great local orchard and they always have bushels of, you know, the peaches or the apples, whatever's in season so we can get fruit from them. And I thought I could go to the produce auction and just get bushels of tomatoes and peppers and onions and things that I would like to can and have canned. I'm just gonna get them for a deal at the auction this summer. I'll take you with me. We'll see what kind of deal we get. That's how I'm gonna do my canning for this year. I'm not doing a garden this year. It's just not gonna happen and I'm okay with that. But we can still get a lot of good canning done. And then next up, 
I have mentioned it a few times online. I've been heavily researching the different freeze dryers, um, looking at getting a large, and Travis was just, we were extending our kitchen and making sure that it needs to have a dedicated 20 amp circuit, so making sure it would have that. And just uh, already making accommodations for it because I would like to do that. And it seems like something that once we get in the routine with it, once this kitchen is done, we'll have a 16 foot table here and we'll have cabinets over there and the kids, everyone's gonna have their own cabinet. And basically, you know, we live in our kitchen. So we'll be doing school here. I can have the canner going, I can have the freeze dryer going and it's all gonna be right here where we live. <laughs> so that's my thought with a freeze dryer. We could start doing that. Now something, again, I always look at, well now, what can I do? I can't do the freeze dryer right now. I can, can, and so I've been doing that. Um, but with the freeze dryer, even once I get it ordered, I'm waiting to have a few more questions answered. And I do know there's all types of YouTubers that are using these freeze dryers and love them and having great experiences. And I've joined a bunch of groups. Again, I'm just trying to learn about it. And even when I order it, it looks like it's many weeks out until I would actually get it. So something that I have been doing is I like to build up food storage for our large family in advance if possible. And I would love to have some freeze dry food to start working with start building my freeze-dried food storage. So I did go ahead and join Thrive Life. They are a freeze-dried food company and they got a lot of freeze-dried food. They got a lot of options. I joined them because as I got reading about them, by joining, if I have products I put on auto ship, I get an additional 15% off and I get free shipping. So I just, put in my first order with them. I got ground beef, I did milk, I did diced chicken, uh, red peppers, onions, banana chips, strawberries. Big old list of like 20 or so things because I want to already have those items on hand. When I order the freeze dryer, that's the first thing I gotta do. And then when it gets here, it's gonna be a setup process for Travis to get the thing uh, up and running for me. And then there's gonna be a learning curve and I'm gonna have to learn how to use it and have some trial and error time. In the meantime, I thought, well, I want a stash of freeze dried food for my family to have on hand as an option. And I want freeze dried food in my food storage. So that's why I joined Thrive Life, so I can go ahead and get that freeze-dried food storage going. So I consider that another thing I am doing homesteading-wise for my family. If you are interested in looking at Thrive Life and seeing what products they have available, when I looked the other day, they had most of their dairy products. There was one or two things they did not have available. All of their meat was there. What I saw, because someone told me, Thrive Life is great to order from, but they don't have a lot in stock. But whenever I joined the other day, like their bulk packages that are already picked out for three to six months, I didn't see where those were available. But all the individual products, like if you wanna get chicken and if you wanna get uh, a 10 can supply, or if you wanna get green beans and you wanna get a six can supply, all of those are available. So I will put that link as the first link down in the description below. So to review, the canning is going to continue. I hear my goose, okay. <laughs> um, the, the goose just sounds his alarm at different, different times of the day. I think we are gonna get deep into the freeze drying. And then the other thing I would like to do is get some more chickens going. But chickens, I mean, it's a moving line. It doesn't have to be in the spring. It could be in the summer. I thought earlier today, I was like, Travis, I wanna brood some more chickens. But he reminded me that we still have a good bit of hay in the building that I would want to do chickens in. It's kind of like you give a mouse a cookie. <laughs> Mama wants to brood chickens, so we have to have another tree removed and we need to order another like hay barn building to put down. By the way, we did get a pony in fall 2020. I'm like, oh, I'm remembering other, other things we accomplished. But we need to get another hay barn building delivered so that I can have that old A-frame building back for when I want to do things like brood chickens and brood meat birds. I'm like, okay, well, that's not on the project list for right now, so what I'm gonna do is I know two different local folks that raise chickens until they get to like the pullet stage and then they sell them. They're a little bit more expensive than 
getting them at Tractor Supply or ordering them from one of the hatcheries or wherever. But anyway, that's what I'm thinking chicken-wise. Uh, one of the other things that we accomplished on our homestead in 2021 is we had all these broody hens and all these broody ducks that were, were hatching babies. So at one point our flock got real big again and I went ahead and cut it in half and passed a bunch on actually to my same friend that has the orchard because she wanted to get going with chickens and ducks. Then later in the summer, kidney surgery, uncertain time, I had another friend that I passed the rest of the chickens on to who was gonna butcher some and use some as laying hens. And I was taking a little chicken mama break through the winter because they wouldn't be laying then anyway. But anyway, uh, fresh year, fresh chicken thoughts, kidneys good, babies good, gonna get some more chickens going, but unless I want to brood them in my feed room again in the basement, which I could do. It's just we have that so nice and organized now. I'm thinking I don't want to add the tubs in there with the chickens. So I'd really like to use my outside A-frame building as a brooding house again. And we have to do a different hay barn configuration before I can do that. We buy our hay a year or so in advance. We have another storage container plus that A-frame that we keep the hay in for the pony. And uh, anyway, I do plan to get some more laying hens going this year. Probably will not do a rooster, but between our goose and our great Pyrenees that are right there, they keep predators away. So this will be like, I don't know, my sixth or seventh flock of chickens, the, the 2022 uh, chicken flock. And then my big, we will see, again, we have the equipment for it, but I would need to get my brooding building back. There's a possibility we could do meat birds again. I just feel like that's such a great way to get meat and a great family activity, you know, from raising them all the way to putting them in the freezer. But I'll have to get my building back for that. But I can order them as late as June, early July, and then here in Virginia, they would need to be butchered by October, and that still gives them plenty of time to grow out. So that's like, that's on my maybe list. So on my already happening list is the canning and probably gonna happen is the freeze dryer. And I'm gonna be working with those things here in this kitchen. At some point during 2022 is gonna be move the garden. At some point in 2022, I'm gonna get 12 to 24 pullets and get another chicken flock going because we're all set up with everything for there. The maybe is, will we do meat birds? We'll just see into the summer how that's going. All of those are good forward movement activities, especially as we're working out our renovation plans. Uh, you know, I just might get tired. We may start on the inside of this house and I'm like, brooding building is available, but mama's not raising no meat birds this year. And that's okay too. And the the pony that I just mentioned, and again, like I think of him as a, a family project, not necessarily homestead related, uh, but we did get a rescue pony. We're like, Jim Morrell, you retired in fall 2020. Why did you then get a rescue pony? Because I wanted to get a pony for my kids. And I know that my mom is always available to help uh, train the pony and train the kids. And I thought, even if I'm sitting here pregnant with my feet up, all of that can be done without me pretty much. So I bought the pony. Uh, my mom has worked with the kids extensively with the pony. He was a meat market rescue. My, my mom has done several meat market rescues and they have followed the exact diet that he has need to have. And we've had the vet out. He's had work done on his teeth and all of his care. And they're saying he's just in absolutely fantastic shape. And Naomi does his feeding morning and night. And my mom takes the kids out when she's here. There's all kinds of riding lessons with him so that is another wonderful critter that is here on our property whatever you want to call it happy homestead small homestead sudden homestead but kind of not and uh, basically it's based on mama's energy homestead <laughs> uh, but the pony is something that they don't need me for but I just thought that that would be a great experience for the children, and it has been. And my mom does all kinds of professional level side saddle riding and shows and events, and Naomi goes and does a lot of those with her as well these days. 
And so overall, just a, a great family activity. So a lot of folks have asked, you know, what happened to the homestead, if we still are doing it or whatever. So we did it, mama had to rest some, and now, I mean, it's all still here. Now I'm feeling the energy and the, uh, just even the mental space where like before, when I was really sick and when I was in my pregnancy, even putting the canner on the stove seemed like too much. The energy that I had went to taking care of, you know, getting myself up and perched every day and doing school with the kids and making these videos and that's as far as I could get. And right now I'm feeling the energy and the mental space to where, hey, I can get that canner out and start setting that on the stove and I can get excited about my freeze dryer and we can see where we go from there. So right now on our homestead uh, animal count, we have, uh, of course, our two Great Pyrenees, a multitude of cats, our goose, our pony, a goat, we have a sheep, a bunny, and that's where our homestead is sitting for today. Besides adding a flock of chickens again to get going again with that, I'm not thinking at this point that there's any other animals we're going to add for 2022. I still would like to, you might, a friend of mine just had a big, big hog butchering and a lot of families we know were out and a part of that and it looked like just a good learning experience. I would like to learn from her and do a pig or two at some point. And I'm still not opposed for doing a dairy cow at some point in the future. But I think overall the renovations are going to take over our life for a big season and me continuing to do what I can with food preservation in our kitchen and move forward with that is always a good thing and that's all this mama can do. So I hope you enjoyed watching this what happened to the homestead video and going down memory lane with me. I appreciate you. Thanks for listening and I will see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye bye.